Now what about the coccyx? Here we have the tailbone, vestigial tailbone, which can be quite vulnerable to trauma. So we may see fractures in childbirth, we may see it with repetitive trauma, so truck drivers or equestrians, patients who um, like their winter sports, snowboarding and uh, skiing. So we see many patients who have this type of pain, and what are their options? Well, they can wait, or they can have a coccygectomy if they have a fracture. But that's not a very appealing option if you can do something that's more conservative. And so here we have a truck driver who could no longer work, and we can see here on his sagittal CT scan that there is some angulation and diastasis of the coccygeal vertebra. And so he underwent blocks, and there's a ganglion which is ventral to the coccyx called the impar ganglion, and it's a solitary retroperitoneal structure that is ventral to the coccyx, and it's the termination of the paravertebral sympathetic chains. And so the first block was performed in 1990 and can be very effective for patients with coccygeal pain. This patient, the truck driver, underwent the impar ganglion block and had good relief for many months. And when it recurred, a novel approach to try to prolong that duration of relief was to actually ablate it with radiofrequency. And so we can see here the patient's in a supine position. Here's the coccyx, and you want to use guidance because here's the rectum, and you want to avoid um, injecting into the rectal tissues. And we can see that the probe does extend ventrally into the soft tissues and in the region of the impar ganglion. Injection of contrast shows the spread into the region. And the patient underwent ablation at 42 degrees for about four minutes and had permanent um, resolution of his pain and was able then to resume his, his job. And so again, an area where we may not think of that has us helping out not only diagnostically but also therapeutically and a non-operative option.